step together is the ultimate in ensuring young people get to and from school safely so it is our school chaperoning service now i think chaperones probably like mm, what does that mean basically our phenomenal street team in their purple jackets go out every day after school and before school along certain routes in birmingham to ensure that young people on the way to school get there on the way home get home the young people are seeing what we're doing and they are literally gravitating towards us because they see us as a voice for them. Trying to do like on the street mentoring, coaching, signposting young people to different opportunities that the team's aware of. You know, like a collage of like stickers and just put it out there like a vision board. So like when, because sometimes life gets hard in it, but you see like if you've got a vision board and you can look on it, you can look at it and it reminds you like, you know what? I can still, yeah, this is what I want to do. Every day is going to be different, so I need to be prepared as best as possible to handle the day that's about to come. Yeah, you've been a over that pattern, over that, that mother pattern. Isn't it? Nah, over forget pattern. Pattern. We have to keep making the change because this is what they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day is going to be different, so I need to be prepared as best as possible to handle the day that's about to come. If that makes sense. That's a part of it. It's praying, making sure that. We are praying together, we are praying before, we're praying after, but also part of it is just make sure I'm mentally ready and focused to know that at any point it's good, anything could happen. What's happening? What's the problem? No, come on. No, 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 no. no come down, come down, brother. Calm down, calm down. If you're not ordering any food, get out of the shop! Before we start and warm up, Sister Shirley, would you like to bless us with a prayer? Does it encourage us? Oh, most holy and righteous God, we thank you for the privilege again that we can come and be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your safekeeping Almighty God, and as we are preparing to go among your children, uh, God, you've chosen them, and you've called us for this season and this time, and we only have this moment, and so God, enthuse our hearts, encourage us in a way beyond our own understanding, and allow us, Almighty God, to go out uh, in, in force as your army, though we are two and three, God, we know that your angels, we make up thousands, and so we are standing together, Almighty God, flat-footed for you, but reaching out to your people, your children, whoever they may be, young, old, or indifferent, God, help us to be a hand out stretch that's what you require of us mighty God to help us to be all that we can be set aside all our worries and all our cares almighty God you understand that we come with all our own needs but we rest them right now in your hands almighty God and we are standing in your force as we're ready to move out under your anointing breathe and cover us again like never before God assign warring and ambush angels to surround each and every one of us God so that we are protected from the left right back and front in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. First off from a prayer standpoint we want to make sure from a spiritual element we are covered um, out there because we understand it's not just a physical wall it's a spiritual wall as well but also from a sense of um, protection we want to make sure that we cover all bases so we might we try to make sure that we have a sense of faith in everything that we do. From an exercise point, we want to get everyone charged, ready to get out there. So we just don't want to just tell everyone to go out today. We want to create an environment where basically when these young people are encountering us, they're literally just like, why are these guys got so much energy? <laughs> so we also encourage different people to do the warm-ups as well. So it's not just me leading it or one of the head leading it. We want everyone to be a leader as part of our organisation. And then we want that same ethos with the young people. Today, guys, I need a high push of First Class Fridays. Literally, it is the Are You Coming campaign. I need to see you there campaign. I need to see you. We got some leaflets still in the car. 
I think there's some in here as well somewhere. Yeah, I saw some here. But literally, push it like yeah. you've got some in your you ready, you know. <laughs> push it like crazy. I want everyone to be like, yo, I need to see you later. Sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. So the plan is to go out as we normally do, same mindset, but just more, be more aware um, of our surroundings as well and just to let like more young people know that today is the day, like today is the day that we start First Class Fridays and that it's not too late to sign up, you can still just turn up if you want and um, it starts at six. I personally feel this Step Together programme has been one of the most impactful programmes I've ever run. It's been like so... I don't want to say impactful again, but that's the best way to describe it. Um, the young people, literally, when they leave school, they are running up to us and giving us a high five. Like, you can see the impact that we're having on a day-to-day -day basis, even with some of the non-engagers now are 100% engaged and want to be a part of what we're doing, want to come to First Class Fridays, want to wear our t-shirts. They're literally indoctrinated with the First Class brand. They just want to be a part of us. I feel like um, even the impact from the teachers, the teachers have noticed the difference of us being there as well. And they can't imagine a day without us. And like, I just find it phenomenal, some of the work that we're doing. I think as a point, we should really just, some of the things that these young people have to experience on a day-to-day -day basis, they have to walk through this on a day-to-day -day basis. And like, I was having a conversation with them the other day, and it was like, nothing good comes from Las House. And I thought, well, you could be the change. Like, we have to really direct them that you can do more. So I'm going to give an example of what we had the other day. We had a young person from a pupil referral unit and his friends were mocking him saying, oh yeah, you ain't going to become nothing. You're going to be a drug dealer, you're going to be a pharmacist, yeah. But then he turned around and said, oh, but I want to be a barber. Wow. So I said, you can be a barber and better yet. You What age are you now? He was like, oh, um, 16. When did you finish school? He told us when he finished school. I said, all right, then here's a barbering course that I know you can do. I've got the connection. Let's go make it happen. Phoned up the person with the... Um, the barbering course, got him on a course for when he leaves school and now he's like, oh my gosh, I can actually do this? And then I told him, all right, so how much do barbers make? I'm like, well, averagely a haircut's between 20 and 25. He's like, 20 and 25? You imagine me making that? And I'm like, <laughs> simple things can uplift a young person's life yeah. and they don't even know that they have an opportunity to do something different. Yeah. Where before that day, he was probably thinking, yo, I probably will be a drug dealer because that's what I'm good for. Mm. But we have to keep making a change because I said, this is what they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Young man, he couldn't understand that there was life outside of Newtown. <laughs> I mean, he, he just couldn't understand that there was life outside of Newtown. Really, I can move outside of Newtown. <laughs> Obviously, at the end of the whole route, you get to Dixie. Nothing's happening in Dixie. Dixie's calm. Shirley's got that locked. Cool. But then outside, seeing some a little bit of a commotion. Let's see, you know, <laughs> two guys scurrying off from one another. Listen, listen. Mm -hmm. Come here. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Oh, what? what happened? Nothing. You sure? I'm sure. You don't seem like it. Huh? You don't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it. Who, who did he say to you? I don't know. He even said, huh? he could take me in the fire, say, come, let's take it. He'd be in a Over oh, oh, that pattern, it. Over oh, that. Nah, mother pattern, it. Nah, oh, forget so pattern. You're gonna lung it out for what? Nah, I told him, scrap me one when it's over and done with him, dusted. Yeah, so. Why not? When we get to the bottom of it, and then basically just two guys want to fight because one said to the other that he could knock him out. And, he, and then the other friend is like, nah, you're not fighting my friend either. So you know it's not going to be a straightener, but they said they're going to go for a straightener. But we watched that. We made sure we calmed them out first because it could have just happened right there on the road, right there. They were, they were squared up, ready to go. But we jumped in. One of the young people from another school came down, um, basically wanted a straightener with the other one. But we stepped in. We just made sure everything was all right. We defused the situation, even if we didn't say stop. Us being there prevented the fight from actually happening, so this is where we have a positive outcome. Ma'am, Drew Cutter. Yeah, Drew Cutter was good. Um... So the debrief itself is a place where our staff can actually talk about the things that's happened, talk about some of the challenges that they've had on shift, talk about some of the things that young people are facing, talk about how we can improve our best practice, but also just give a place where we can be reflective in everything that we do and just get better. Just to add in two hours, um, what, was, what was good about with the incident that happened and the fact that Alex stood at the top of the road so he could see me at this mm, end yeah. and still see Antonio, yeah. that was really good and then he came and got me on right let's, let's go down yeah. I'm going now Shirley so come <laughs> so that was I liked the fact that it was on 
the board with making sure we have eyes on everybody. Position so they didn't forget in the midst of the chaos. Go on, back to the So this is where I'm just going to encourage everyone to say, yo, number one, what we're doing is making an impact. Yep. These young people are seeing what we're doing and they are literally gravitating towards us because they see us as a voice for them. For them. Now, that means that we have a responsibility to be the best that we can be every single day we come. Yes. Because yes. when the one day we are off, we can never display how we're meant to be displaying or never give them whatever they need at that point. The head teacher had many reasons um, as to why certain things weren't done and then also as well, the senior leadership team made themselves aware to us who they were and to say thank you for everything we've done even though we've been doing this for I say a hot minute now so yeah interesting but we're doing an important work that's what it proves to me doing an important work mm -hmm. and they recognize it but probably don't want to feel as if they're being pushed out of their role because mm. it's a real 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 responsibility that we're taking on that's it really. The biggest challenges that we find is um, probably the full relationships with the teachers and the kids and like them them knowing how to address the kids and like deal with the children's problems. Like sometimes the children will say, Oh, um, I don't feel like my teachers are listening to me, like I'm struggling with this and they're not they're not showing me anything to do like better to get on with my work. So I feel like that's the biggest challenge that we have. So sometimes I suggest to them, if that teacher's not listening to you, go higher, like go above their head and just discuss with them like what you're finding difficult and just see if you can find a way to make things better in the classroom for yourself. As much as we can banter with them and call, they still need to know there's a difference between an adult and a child. So yeah. address me as a grown person at the same time. No, no, in it. Each individual is different, individual is different in it, so it's based on their persona, their body language, it's everything that I receive from them energy-wise, I kind of just play on that. And obviously I was a youth, I was a youth myself, and at the end of the day, like, I see myself as a growing man, so I've still got learning to do and everything like that, so I kind of just come at them on a level where they can feel like they can relate with me. I'd say today was amazing based on the conversation that was had by people in the community, mm -hmm. and the appreciation that they had for what we do when you was explaining to them and addressed to them. So being out with the step together guys today was a lot of fun. It was enlightening. I've been out before with them, but in the morning, so it's a lot quieter in the morning on a Monday morning. But today after school, the last day of term, breaking up for half term, we had an army of like 1,200 children walking out of school and it was chaos, to be quite honest. And highlighted a number of safeguarding issues, especially at like crossing the road. Children just literally walk out school straight into the road. Cars aren't wanting to stop. We're having to stop the cars for them and, you know, temp get the tempers down a little bit because people are getting a bit angry and, and upset on the road. So it was, it was an eye-opening, but I'm super proud of the team. I love just being out with you guys sometimes. It's just nice to be... I don't do a lot of delivery, so when I do it, when I'm out there, it's talk to people. It's nice, and what I love is the fact that you guys are so embedded in the communities that you're serving, that they know you, they're familiar with you, like you're doing something, you're doing really great work, and it's super, super like empowering, inspiring, and motivating for me to like friend tell. Kind of thing when I see how people respond to you guys, they see you guys, they love, they love you, they like have. They have time to talk to you. You gotta understand, like, the general person is busy. Busy doing nothing most of the time. I don't wanna stop and talk to anybody. But they stop and they're talking to you, they're engaging with you, they're asking you questions. They feel comfortable enough to ask you. The team are just phenomenal. They go out there, they engage with the young people. The community know us, the young people know us, they're talking to us. They're asking questions, you know, how are you guys? What do you do? What's this all about? They're saying, oh, miss, have a good half term, miss, I'll see you soon. And look forward to seeing us out there. So I know that Purple Jackets being out on the street is beneficial, it's necessary, um, but it, it is hard work and it was freezing. <laughs> it was really cold, it was blown away. It's Storm Eunice and we're still out there. So I'm super proud, really, really proud. Well done, guys, like, you smashed it, absolutely smashed it. And I know it's not just Aston Manor, it's not just Hulk, it's a joke during quarter, it's everywhere. That is why the eyes are on this group yeah. of outreach workers.
For me, the opportunity to be able to be a part of this charity organization um, and to work with the team that I work with, um, every one of them, I feel like mom. So that's nice. I'm treated like, like that. And so that's really extra special. Um, and the way that we safeguard one another, and, and that's been acute when we're out, and I, I've been able to observe. And there isn't anyone um, that I can say doesn't do it. Okay, so we're going to do a lot about. Wait, 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 wait. what's it? Is this the new Antonio? <laughs> 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 hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, 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 hey, buddy.
young Muslim people. So I'm gonna use that as a as a topic like how's fasting going, how are you finding it? Have you found school difficult? Well, because I'm a Christian I can't speak to a Muslim. That's foolishness. It's about love, it's about engaging young people. What's that called? Recite? Mm -hmm. Can you pray in Arabic and all that as well? Huh? And it doesn't matter what the topic, it's about making young people feel heard and it's giving them sometimes that ear to listen to. Sometimes, yes, we have ideas and thoughts that we want to share with young people, but sometimes young people just need to offload and unpack how they're feeling about their day, what's going on within their family life, in their friendship circles, or how they're just feeling on the day. I don't want to go uni as well. So. Do you do vision boards or anything like that? Have you ever done one before? Yeah, but I've done like a lot of research. Yeah, yeah. And then um, next, no, so next week, or no, like two weeks time, yeah. in art, we have this man coming in that's an architect. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. and then we're going to be with for the whole day. What you should do in your room, right, is get like a big piece of paper, yeah. like a sugar paper, and cut out images of like buildings that inspire you, mm -hmm. and any architects that you think, yo, they slap. And just pull it on your room and just like put like uni and just you know like a collage of like stickers and just put it out there like a vision board so like when because sometimes life gets hard in it but you see like you've got a vision board and you can look on it you can look at it and it reminds you like you know what i can still yeah this is what i want to do i'm not here to look good i'm here to empower and transform lives that's it that's the mission we are here to make a difference we're trying to connect young people into their purpose so any tools that we have within us i'm saying to the team use everything within your arsenal everything within your resource and then sometimes it helps you with the decision making that's what i've done so when i was creating this organization and other things i created a vision board and when i go through hard days i'm like you know what let me stay focused it's hard it's hard to it's hard to stay focused nowadays especially with social media when i'm talking about things like a vision board i'm trying to encourage them and inspire young people to say you know what the power of writing a vision, having a 5, 10, 15 year plan for your life. Don't just live and just exist aimlessly with no sense of purpose. It's important that you have a vision. Well, I enjoy it a lot. Obviously, it's for the youth in it and there's a lot going on um, out there. So um, with what's going on, I don't like what I see, don't like what I hear. Um, so I do the best in my ability to Reduce it. Sometimes you have to, you have to, you have to teach someone how to be more mature by handling them mature. You just get what I'm saying? They ain't always gotta give the same energy back. It's a better outcome. That's how you avoid situations are sometimes. So engage them, tend to find out why they do what they're doing, what things they do like, what things um, they'd rather do. You know what I mean? And then when it comes to just being involved in certain things, why did they get involved in it? So, you know what I'm saying? Is it peer pressure? And what kind of peer pressure is it? And I'll speak to them about the peer pressure and everything like that, and obviously acting out things on your own behalf and not following lead or not following suit, you get I me? Mean? So, keep doing good. Don't go back and report and avoid report. And I'll be checking in. Yeah? <laughs> she came to talk to me. Because she's come over, greeted everybody, stood next to me, and she just, she just looked at me and smiled, and then, like, yeah. So I was like, okay, cool, it's conversation time. Do you get me? Um, but she was just telling me and updating me with her relationship with her dad um, over what's recently and everything like that, and how things are. So just kind of, I would meet Alex and um, Blacksley, kind of just reasoning with her and everything like that, um, and giving her um, different points of the situation. Because obviously, you know, she's only really speaking with like, her mum mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But, Alice is basically trying to just say to her, like, you also need to get a point of away from your mum and someone to kind of upload on yeah. other than your mum because it's a little bit biased. I had a good conversation with one girl, sorry. No, no, I had a good conversation with one girl. She was talking about that she wants to do architecture, she's struggling to find work experience. We were kind of just talking and just motivation, how to get motivation in general to mm. work in the future. Yeah. Architecture, architecture. It's a few, there's a few things coming up. She might need to. Um, probably look at um, build things that are building at the moment because I know that there's yeah. a lot of apartments building at the moment so if you go into the show homes or any place like that they'll be able to have like 
even just get the experience for like a few hours or yeah. something like that. I suggested a couple different ideas and I just suggested trying to get any kind of work experience in general, don't limit yourself because you mm-hmm. can take the skills from, from any work experience with you. Because she said they've got a work experience week in July and they, they need yeah. to get yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so just come again tomorrow. Um, starting to turn off great, good energy and just like, just keep hitting these kids with that street mentorship that they need and that they're actually craving for. We're going to 2022, how are you feeling about, about the future, just things in general and the direction of where things are going? I'm excited. I'm, this is the year I personally feel. I think 2021, even though people might say it's been challenging and it has been challenging, but I also think it's been a beautiful year of growth. Um, I feel like everyone grown around us amazingly and I feel like they've stepped and put themselves in the right position to be the best that they can possibly in 2022 and I feel like this is the point where we lift and lay off guard and say, you know what, we want, we're going to come for it and we're going to take it with no limitations, we're just going to give it everything that we possibly can. <laughs> so I feel like this is about to be an absolutely amazing year, I'm going to pull it on camera so in the future you can play it back and tell you that this year coming up is going to be phenomenal. Antonio's a phenomenal leader. Um, really, I was devastated, heartbroken, I'll be honest. Like when he says that he's going to um, step down. It's my last day um, on the Step To Give A program. And it's kind of like, um, I've created something that's actually quite amazing, but it feels like it's time for me to step down and leave the team to grow. Too big, strong. Looking, hench brothers come down the window. ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? She's saying, I'm a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> what part? <laughs> yeah, she's been telling me about these brothers. The babies. Well. Like, like, <laughs> Tom was wishing he had a medium t shirt. <laughs> Literally, like, yeah, you would have gave some try out because, yo, they're massive. They're big. They're massive. <laughs> There was one one day, if you call your brother, it's not that day. <laughs> you don't want that today. But other than that, it was extremely quiet. Um, that was it, really. The decision's been kind of like gradually for my own personal commitments. Um, it feels like something that is right. And also, I've been feeling in the, I don't know if I can say this on camera, in the spirit that it's something, is a change of season that I'm going through. I do feel like, the work that I was sent to first class to do, I've done, if that makes sense, so it kind of feels like it's the time. But yeah, it's good to have some fun with them. Yeah, yeah. Especially the ones that we always on their case. Yeah, to just run after them. Good to just, yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm about to say, because I'm commanding, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm upset, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know what it was? I'm going to say it again. <laughs> It's how I come out of the bag. I'm not a little piece, I have ice cream for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey guys! Like, yeah. This is straight, it's all weird. Yeah, it's all weird. Turn to me, turn to me. I was like, wow, Antonio. Like, but one of the things is, is like when people are on assignment, you know, not everyone's going to stay forever. This, from when we first stepped into the areas of Newtown, Los Angeles, and Jewel Quarter. It kind of felt just like a dark place and it kind of felt like there was no light. Now, being on the journey of stepping out on a day-to-day basis, we've literally seen the transition from where it was this dark place to us being the light in the community and the community has also vouched for that too. It's been amazing to see how the young people respond to us, how the respect that they have for us and how they look at and respect the team. It feels amazing to think of to think about some of the situations that we prevented from happening, um, some of the situations that could have happened and some situations that have happened and because we're there, didn't happen. Are you sure you're good? No, good. I ain't gonna move till everything's sorted, you know? Everything's sorted. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. You're right. It's been amazing to actually just say, you know what? I can personally say, if I was to die today, I may change in the areas that I came from. We're all honestly though, thank you for everything. Like yeah. you've made my time here absolutely amazing and as you know already I'll support you guys in whatever possible so this isn't the end but it's going to be seen next time. Mm-hmm. We're gonna miss you. <laughs> <laughs> see you <again. laughs> I know, it's not like you you'll see me. <laughs>
But like on, on a personal level, but also on a <laughs> no, on a professional level, also on a personal level, yeah. Antonio's been a great help to me personally and to the organisation. Um, and yeah, I'm wishing him well for the future. No more freedoms for you. There's a few things that I pass on and the first one that's coming to my heart is keep the faith. Keep the faith to know that the work that we're doing, there's a reason for it and that the work that we're doing is actually creating the change within the community and it has created the change. The second one is faith. Um, keep the faith in everything that they're doing but believe that God's about to make a way even when we was perceived there was no way. The faith to just keep going but also the discernment to know that how to engage with each young person, to, to, when to, as I would say, turn it up and when to turn it down. Sometimes we need to be that hype guy, be the smiley person, be the person, that energy. But sometimes we need to bring it down and say, you know what, how are you actually feeling? Let's just touch base. We pray that every seed that's been planted in us and in them, Lord, continues to grow and throughout the days and throughout the weeks that are, are to come. And we just pray as we step even into a brand new month, which represents a brand new season, Lord. We just pray that you're able to allow us to identify what needs to be done, what needs to be said, and how we need to move, and how we need to act, and how we need to be. Not just do, but how, what we need to do, but how we need to be yeah. um, as human beings, Father. We just pray that every gift that needs to be ignited in this season may be ignited and brought to the forefront, um, may it rise to the top so that we can actually be lights to other people um, in their darkest uh, places. Anything that's even going on in our own lives, Lord, any um, turmoil, any stress, any storms and winds that are raging in our own lives, I pray that you give us clarity within that, but also as well, allow us not to lose sight of you, who is the peace um, that passes all understanding, gives us peace that passes all understanding. Uh, we trust you, we believe you, and even in those moments where we start to waver in our faith, we continue to step out and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to say thank you for Nathan Sabrina for even creating the vision of Step Together in the first place and being in a point where they've been great leaders to actually put together First Cast Nation and get it to the level where it is now but also create so many superstars that are in the community and have been doing the work it's amazing to see every single member of the team that are under the leadership just grow and develop. So I just personally, in this moment, just want to say thank you for everything that they've done. Before we step out and they were doing a shift, we, we always have a thought. So all this week, for instance, I've been reminding the team about our values. We have six core values as a charity, faith, love, time, trust, passion and integrity. So we've been looking at different like icebreakers and techniques that we can use to talk to young people about our values and to see what type of values they have themselves. Name what's your final position on it yourself? I, th I think the same kind of thing that you can, you're free to do whatever you want, like, mm -hmm. well, within reason, but you definitely do need to know the consequences. Like you gotta be aware of what mm -hmm. is going on outside. Like you can't just be oblivious to the things that are happening. Like, there's serious things that are going on. Two, three days ago, I was speaking to about 10 young girls from a, from a school and I was talking to them. It's a message that actually my wife I heard speak and talked about, you are a VIP. Oh, High fives. How you doing? How you doing? And I was talking to these young females to say, when you think of the Queen of England, all right, you cannot get access to her. We can't just pick up the phone and say, I'm phoning Elizabeth. You have to go through certain protocols and certain checks and balances before you can get access to the queen. So I was saying to these young girls, I was saying, listen, you need to know that you are a queen and that you are actually a VIP, a very important person. So don't allow everybody and anybody to have access to you. Because we're talking about it together, we get a good way to then discuss it with the young person. So it gives us 
like some insight on how we should discuss like by speaking about everyone else's opinion on the subject. It's been good. I'm, I'm so proud of the Step Together project, but it has been a challenge. Like HR is a like managing people, managing the team has been challenging. Um, uh, in an ideal world, I would love to be able to offer more hours to our members of the team. They're like doing phenomenal work. My advice to you would be pick something that you enjoy and pick. Make sure your options kind of match up so they're happier. There you are. Right. So we're in the you know in the background trying to negotiate, trying to find ways to add more hours because obviously cost of living is going up, life's happening, so it's a challenge for people. Even though everyone loves to work, we love the ethos, we love the fact that we can be practically hands and feet on the ground, but at the same time, people have practical lives as well to live. And you go you go to a drill quarter academy. You doing it? Yeah. So tell me about that like when they come. So you want to step together, how is that going to be? It's alright, it just makes me feel safe and like someone's there to like guide me and like show me what the right thing to do. First class are absolutely fantastic for our students. Um, they're authentic, they're supportive, they're caring. Uh, they're people that go the extra mile to help students get home safely. Um, they uh, are always trying to ensure that our students are safe, that they're respectful, um, and they, they coach and work with students really well. Being in first class and being a part of STEP, I just feel it's a privilege. I, I deem it a privilege, I wish more people could come on board and, and get to understand this is something that we need to do. We need to be in our community, we need to be among our young people, they need to see us and um, the respect that you get out there is, it's special. I, I couldn't be prouder, like the branding, the presence that we have in communities with young people in certain areas, like, it's phenomenal. Absolutely, like, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, trust me.